All right, so for this little video, the idea of drug testing. So you need to know something going in, okay? You need to have a pretty good idea of what's happening in your community. So maybe, let's say we have 5% of our community is heroin users. I don't know, I made that up. Heroin? E? No E? Yeah, I'll let you decide. Uh, are you heroin users? Okay, so if I give a test for heroin usage, the idea is it's going to be accurate. It's going to accurately say, yeah, you're on heroin a certain percentage of the time. Now, it's going to be wrong occasionally. Not very often, though. Otherwise, they wouldn't sell it as a test. I mean, that's just not okay. And so it's also going to react differently to people who are non-heroin users. Okay? So first thing off the bat is we got our, we got our population. We got it broken off into 0.95 non-users. And then over here we got 0.05 users. Now, every test will be different. And this is a Bayes theorem situation. Every test will be different in terms of you know how accurate it is for in this situation or that situation. I can't speak to this particular example, right? I'm just gonna make up a number. But let's just say this, that when used on heroin user, heroin user, it is accurate, I don't know, 98% of the time, okay? So when you think about this, we are going to have then this 5% is going to get broken up into two pieces, a 98% of it, 98% of what? 98% of the 5%. These people here are, you know, correctly identified, if you will. Correctly identified. Uh, you could say that this is a, a true positive. Or they can be positive and test positive. Okay? These here are what we call uh, false negatives. Right? That is 2% of the 5% are incorrectly identified. They are positive, but they tested, but they tested negative. Does that make sense? So the idea is that you either be positive and test positive, or you be positive and you test negative. Huh? Now over here, this same, same exact test, when used on non-heroin users, is accurate, oh, let's say 92% of the time. A little different, okay? Which way does it go, Jay? Is it more this or more that? You know, honestly, I don't know because I've never been around the ins and outs of it. I know that's a fact. I couldn't tell you which way it goes. Everyone's gonna be different, okay? All these people over here are non-users. So what we're gonna say is 92% of the 95% are identified correctly, right? These are ID'd correctly. That is, they are negative and they test negative, right? And, but the other 8%, which seems like a lot of the 95%, are negative, but they test, uh-oh, positive. We call these people the false positives. This is where, this is where Lance Armstrong always claimed to be. Oh, I was falsely accused. Okay, whatever. Now, here's the dealio. Okay? This number here plus this number right here add up to 95%. This number plus this number add up to 5%. Together they add up to 100%. So what you're going to be asked is what's the probability that the person is, is, po is positive or is a user given they test positive? So what had to happen first? Well, the test positive had to happen first. Well, the test positives are 0.98 times 0.05 plus the 0.08 times the 0.95. Those are all the positive testers. And what I'm interested in is, is a user and tested positive. So that would be this fella right here. 
Now if I break out the calculator, ah, you hippie. Thirty-nine percent chance. Now that is just pathetic. So don't go and cry. And this is a bearable test. You're right. This would be an awful test. In other words, what's happening here is that we are only, of all people that are testing positive, only 39% of them actually are positive. If that were true, this would be a horrible test. Now again, why is that coming up so bad? Because I made these numbers up out of thin air. Okay, Had, I been, had those numbers reacted differently, or had I had different numbers there, in other words, this would have come out totally different. Okay, Now, for instance, let's just change this up. Suppose this was 99% accurate. Oopsie daisy. Ah, stop it. Right? That makes sense? And so we're going to be getting the 0.01. There we go. And so if that were true... That bumps us up to 83.7% of the people who test positive are positive. Now, how could I even get even better yet? I could get even better yet, of course, if these guys were even more accurate, obviously. Okay? So that's how Bayes' theorem works. You could also say, what's the probability of just getting period a false positive? This isn't Bayes' theorem, but you can use it from this same situation. And a false positive, of course, is this guy here times this guy here. Very few people are interested in this guy's and this guy's, it would seem. Frequently we're, at, we're interested in, well, what about false negatives, what about false positives? Um, these are the things that people seem to get hung up on. If you get a false positive, you know, if it's truly a false positive, yes, you're inconvenienced, you have to go back and take another drug test. The chances that you'd fail two in a row if you're truly clean are minuscule, literally minuscule. Uh, here, if you do the math on this, the chances that you are giving a false positive in this community is about 0.95%. By the way, every time you do this test, it is um, it's independent. Okay, so in other words, it's independent. So it's A and B. So that's a multiply that situation. So it'd just be you know um, times it again. So the chance that it would happen would be something like 0.009% chance that you would get two false positives in a row. Meaning that when I see someone who says, well, I failed the test twice, but I was totally clean, the person might tend to kind of, mm, you know, disbelieve them in that situation. Okay? That's how Bayes' theorems work. Um, this part appears Bayes' theorem, of course. Okay? But once you have this tree diagram set up, you can play the game down here with anything, just, just the false positives, for instance. Okay. You could also do this. What's probably the person is clean, given they tested clean. All right. And of course, testing clean means you could be positive and test negative, which is whatever. Obviously, I don't want those people driving my children to school in a school bus. Okay. But before you get your, your yourself all in a dither about it, it's this amount out of that denominator. Well, I'm here to tell you that this is the lion's share of the denominator, meaning we have a giant percentage here, meaning that when we do this problem, we're going to see that um, that uh, the chances that I have, a, you know, some, some uh, dope head driving my school bus or whatever, that he somehow snuck through is almost non-existent. In other words, 99.8% of the people who test clean are clean. So that's less than, it's about 2%, well, it's about a 0.2% or 0 0.1 something percent chance, okay, that we, someone would sneak through the cracks on this. And so you don't have to worry too much about that. Hope that helps.